Homicides, rapes, armed robberies, we're a community on the grow and crime is just a part of that. But what happens if authorities need leads in a case, a starting point? Well, that's when they turn to Detective Phil Toff with the Minnehaha County Sheriff's Department. He's always armed on the job investigating the crimes, but many times it's with pencil and paper. If a picture's worth a thousand words, forensic artist and detective Phil Toff believes a composite drawing is worth a hundred leads. It's a great source of leads. The, the composite drawing by itself is not something that is going to convict somebody. The composite drawing is usually when we have an armed robbery or a rape and we have no idea uh, where to start. Uh, and what it lets us do is eliminate suspects. Case in point, last summer a spree of armed robberies seemed to generate the same composite over and over again. Very frustrating. In fact, uh, my friends with the police department and other departments gave me grief. Is that all you can draw anymore? Yeah. After me. But Toff draws what witnesses that, yeah. describe, and that's not always an easy process. The largest percentage of doing the composite artist or the, the drawing itself is to be able to decipher what the person's trying to tell you, um, which is kind of difficult because you're trying to, something that you saw, you have to relate into verbal terms that I can understand and then put down into to visual terms. It's a process that takes 45 minutes to an hour. Try to cut the time down and make it a little bit rough. So people can look at it and use their imaginations a little bit. And in the armed robberies investigation, Toff believes that process paid off because each composite was a step closer to the arrest of Gregory Egeberg. Egeberg now awaits trial. Surreal rapist. But, uh, Toft admits when an arrest is made in any case, he compares his drawing to the suspect in custody. Most of the time, you can see the similarities. Not bad for a kid who used to get in trouble in school for drawing when he was supposed to be studying. If I hadn't have got the, the love for law enforcement and so forth, I probably would have uh, went through college and, and gone into strictly commercial art. Now in law enforcement for 15 years, Toft is one of two police artists in the region to capture suspects on paper. He believes in treating people like he would want to be treated, but sees firsthand some ignore that golden rule. It's getting scary with the, the upswing in, in uh, drugs and gang activity. I believe they've got more violent. Uh, society as a whole doesn't seem to be as caring as it used to be. And I grew up in South Dakota in Sioux Falls where uh, there was always something that you could count on. You know, the community is still a great community, but just from the people that we see a lot of, things have changed. Phil Toft, one of Minnehaha County's finest, and one of the people we think you should know. Detective Toft's job doesn't end when the suspect is behind bars. Many times he's called himself to testify in their trials and show the composites. Two such cases, Gregory Egerberg in the first trial of Donald Moeller, he testified, expects to probably testify in the second. If you wondered why he didn't have a computer, He's from the old school of police artistry. He likes pen and paper. And apparently it's working. Yes, it is. I'm glad you showed all those composite sketches of Gregory Egerberg because you could see as he advanced the uncanny likeness. Yes, it is. Incredible. It is. You're right. Mm -hmm.